what we uh, what we really want to focus on today, we've all got started in the program. It's still early in the year, um, and I'm sure there are tournaments um, that you'd like to do well in between now and the end of the year. You probably had it somewhere in the end that these tournaments like to do well. Ian, what pick uh, pick three tournaments like to do well this year? This year, um, I'm going to play Indonesia Open. So that's a priority day. Uh -huh. And then the fall, the slightly interstate tournament. Yes. Um, the SNM amateur. SNM amateur. SNM amateur. That's a pretty big. That's in Indonesia. Uh, SNM amateur. Asian amateur. Asian amateur. Amateur. Okay, that's good. Where where is that being played this year? In Thailand. In Thailand. In Thailand. That's a big. All right. So so that's really important. Um, Sam, have you got any thoughts of your, your year? Um, which tournaments you've... Yeah, we've got the state champs. Um, Mark for the next one. Um, and then in October when I head home, there's Capera Bowl, Queensland, Amateur as well. Um, as well as there's a Queensland stroke play. So, just one of my things. James, yourself? You... Um, yeah, stay out in the next one. Um, Singapore Amateur in end of July, I think. July, August is normally right about that time. Yeah, that time. Yeah. Um, and then WO a bit later in the year. So. Okay, good. And, and so what we what we see here, um, you know, everybody is different. Everybody has different. So we can't tell you we want you to have your game, you know, at this period of time. So what needs to happen is it's called a, a annual periodization program that you set for yourself. Okay. So handing these out if we can. Just, okay. This is essential. If you want to make sure that at those tournaments you're in the right mode to perform the best you can right at that point. Okay. So the first thing that we need to do Everything that you need for this year is on this page. Everything, practically everything you need. Okay. When will you be doing certain things? Like right now, we're doing some swing uh, changes, uh, but you don't want to be doing major swing changes the week before the WA. Okay. Or you don't want to be doing big swing changes just the week of your provincial tournament back home. That's what happens, panic sometimes. But if you don't have a plan, what happens is you kind of take the wrong turn most of the time, make more bad decisions. This plan is not set in concrete, but it gives you a good basis for what you have to do. So the first, the first thing that you need to do is, we are here in February, and you need to pick not more than five tournaments, majors as you would refer to it, in that you would like to really perform well. Might be club championships, it could be state amateurs, it could be international Asian amateur. You know pretty much which month they're going to be. Right? So, you know, for someone like Ivan, it might be what you're doing is great when he goes back, but, you know, his handicap's coming down, but you get your handicap so that you can maybe play in some of the events here. Okay. So, first part is in that top line, what we want to do is pick a maximum five, it might not be five, it might be only two, it might be three, it's up to you, but you decide where your majors are. So for someone like Tiger, he builds his whole year round four tournaments. Yeah, his four majors. He might have another one that he has, that he really likes to whip up in the players, I'm not sure, you know, this is something that, you know, we can only see that, we know that there's four tournaments that Tiger builds his whole year round. Right now, everything is geared up this time of the year. Like he played in uh, Qatar. Was it Qatar? Abu Dhabi. Abu Dhabi. And, and that's just to find out where he is after he's done some work with, with, his, with the swing coach or wherever he needs to be doing at that point, or physically where he is. All he's doing right now is getting ready for Augusta in April. Everything. He's gearing up, he's assessing where he's going to be. But he's doing all this major stuff right now that he needs to, to make sure that he at that point. So right down, just very you, you should know like W Amada is in you know middle of March, late March, whatever. It doesn't doesn't need to be exact. We know it's in March. 
right? When you go home, get your schedule out and then fill out the exam. It will give you some extra form that you can take home. So now, those, those three, four, five events are penciled in and definitely doesn't matter. So we give you some extra sheets, but the first sheet generally you do it in, in, in pencil, it can be changed because you can rub it up, it doesn't matter, write it down. So, Agnes, do you know which ones you like to play for? You got your provincial tournament? Yeah. yeah. That's all right. That's okay. But do you, um, possibly getting selection for Queen Sirikin, maybe. Yeah. And the World Amateur is round about, you know, round about the October mark. So that spirit of tournament. I don't know. It's just something that I would say that you probably would like to maybe. Think. That's that's me. This is all for you. Which one is important to you? Right. You fill those out there, and and then that's the start of the plan. Do you know which tournament Sivan you want to play good at? Do you know Yeah, so we need to find out for you, because you know, you've never done it before, okay? So if you do well in the tournaments between now and September, <coughs> you might get picked for the Jakarta team in the provincial. So when is that? I guess September? Yes, September. So maybe September, you can put it down. Yeah, it's a goal that you want to. You want to play good in September, yeah? So, right here, that's it. September, say middle of September, put it down there. Ian, have you put the world out there as a priority? Or? No. No? Because it's the same time. I'm, I'm, we might not play there, so. Okay. Well, that's something that is, you know, from, from my point of view. Um, uh, I, I, would, I would suggest, uh, you know, like, for most countries, this, we have an interstate, and they're going to send the three best players away. The three best players don't play in the interstate. That's it, is that because guess what? National yeah. is more important than provincial. Yeah. That's my way of thinking, but yeah. you know, everybody's different. Yeah. <coughs> All right, so now we've got the tournaments that you'd like to, to do well in. And it doesn't have to be exact right now, it can change slightly, but at least now we can now go away and say, listen, I need to know which are your majors that you need to work towards and peak for those tournaments, okay? We know, and we've heard Laurie talk about, you, and most golfers, what they try to do is they try to get their game peaked for 12 months, and they try to play good for 12 months. Do you think that's possible? But guess what? Everybody still tries to do it. <laughs> is that correct? Everybody, no matter where you are, where you are, even you know your form is going down, you need to do some adjustment, you're still trying to play your best golf and your expectations are up here but maybe your game is just going into a slight little little bit for you to, to come out there again. Yeah. How are you going to make improvements, especially if you've identified certain things like uh, I need more uh, better routines in my, in my game because I feel my swing is good but my pre-shot routine, the mental side of routine is no good. So how are you going to go and develop those? Yeah. If you're trying to keep your game there because I've got to do the same things that I normally do. So some adjustments sometimes need to be made at different points. We'll talk about that in a sec. All right. So now what needs to happen here is we go to the bottom of the page, and in February, here we go, your statistics here with regards to, first of all, your, these are just very standard ones, your total putts and your putts, greens and regulation. So you need to know your stats. What are your stats at the moment? What are your fairways hit, what are your greens hit, what are your chipping conversions and your sand conversions? These are just basic stuff here because we can add to that. Okay? But you need to know where you are right now. You need to know where you are with those areas. So we've got the tournaments and then we've got these baseline data here to tell you this is where you are. Okay, now with those sort of statistics, generally you will find you'll be, your score average will be where your objectives are, what is your score average. So that's about there, your score versus part of your score average. In there. That's important because like everything else we know here at the college, what are we focusing on? Low scores. Okay. Not good swings, win tournaments. Right? It helps. If you're swinging it good and hitting it good, but it still doesn't guarantee that you're going to win the tournament because it's about low score. So we need to know what your score average is. And then if your score average is 76.5 and you 
playing the WA Amateur, the chances are you're going to say, listen, probably at that, if I average 76 point something, I'm not going to finish in the top 10. Really sick it. Yeah. So what happens then? You, you make sure that you are playing within your level and you still want to stretch, but you are playing at the level that you know you can. I think we've, we've seen with David trying to shoot 72 when he actually should be shooting 78 to 82. Suddenly now, because of that realization, he's playing in his level where he can cope mentally around the course. He doesn't get so frustrated. So guess what? Now he's shooting his average over the last few rounds would probably be around about 75. Okay. So getting those that baseline uh, is very important. Ian, have you kept a lot of stats on your games uh, um, through the last? On the back home, yes, I did. Yes, all the tournaments when you play internationally as well. Yeah. You have. Yeah. So what's your strong yeah. average right now? What is the, like, what my your average? Yeah. What's your average score? Have you got Have you got an exact number, or are you kind of guess a little bit? A little bit, like about yeah. seventy-three or seventy-four. Yeah. Well, very important. 73 or 74 is, we need to know exactly. That's why we need to know to the point, the decimal point. So if you've got scores and you should have those scores, we want it to be exact because then you know exactly where your starting line is. All right. Because what we want to do is, uh, let's say uh, we've got, you're, you're averaging, let's say for instance you're averaging 30 parts. And next month you're playing the WA Amateur. I'm sure you'd like to have some kind of training in place to take that under 30. So you need to identify in this next phase, so over here, we got this is where we are in theory, but when we go over here, we'd like to be maybe um, 29.7 maybe, yeah? How do we get that 0.3 better? Because that 0.3 over four rounds will be one stroke better, yeah? And that's just in the putting area. So, we will then be able to project, like we do with our numbers, that's why we're so particular about making sure we keep your averages because then we can project where you need to be in a year's time, where we'd like to move towards, yeah? All right. So, once you've got those two at the top, these are the tournaments, this is your baseline. Uh, now, what we need to do is to understand here these five phases that we have at the bottom of the page here, we have GP, which stands for General Preparation, SP, which is Specific Preparation, PC, which is Pre-Competition, C is for Competition, and T is for Transition in between tournaments. Okay. So you need to know which phase you are going to be in from your swing-wise, your mental development, from golfing point of view, uh, from tactically, um, I, am I ready to, to, uh, to perform whether it's in Scotland or in Bogor or in uh, the Thailand Open or wherever it may be? So we, we need to know where you are in your, in your phases. We call these phases that you need to be in. Right? Because GP, which is general preparation, is kind of where most of you guys are right now, this week. Okay? But we don't want to be in GP. You know, we want two weeks before uh, WA Amateur. That's important for you. We don't want to be in general preparation at that stage. So, understand general preparation is what we're doing. And when, when the Indonesian national team came here, you notice that we didn't really do a lot of general preparation. <coughs> Most of you, we did just little adjustments, make sure you train effectively, change, focus more on your mental preparation. Yeah. Very little with, with swing, it was more about that because we knew you didn't have enough time to make any major adjustment changes. So general preparation is generally you want to make sure uh, you have GP where you're, you're a month out from the tournament, you can be in general preparation. Okay. As you get closer to your competition, you want to move into more specific preparation. Okay. So Minimum, minimum month out, general preparation. So the next phase, two weeks out, not less than two weeks, is specific preparation. That means uh, what you need to be doing is, okay, what, what do I need to do to really get ready for this tournament? You know, what sort of shots do I need with regard?
regards to I'm playing the Joomla open in two weeks' time, whatever to say, for instance. What shots do I need? I'm going to be playing generally with the conditions. I need to be able to control my trajectory a little bit more. I might be able, I might have to put a little more practice or training in the scrape shot because if you miss the greens, you can't lob it, you've got to kind of run up banks and stuff like that. It might be that the greens are really quick. Really quick. You know that these greens generally are really, really quick. So a specific preparation would be, I'm not going to be practicing a lot of uphill putts, I'll be practicing a lot of downhill putts. So here on my, on my uh, home course, the greens are reasonably slow, but still I'm going to develop a stroke for faster greens. Okay. So that's more specific preparation that's required. Now pre-competition is generally about a week out, a week before the tournament. And this is where most people fall down. Because a week before, I'm not getting my driver so good, I'm suddenly going to start to work with something totally different and be back into general preparation one week before the tournament. Or even worse, one day before the tournament, suddenly everybody's at the range grinding, hitting 500, 800 balls. Okay? The week before the tournament, whether you're a boxer or you're a swimmer or you're a cyclist, Olympic, when you get one week, as you get close to the tournaments, you're actually tapering off the volume of shots that you're hitting. You're actually hitting less balls. But what you are creating is a lot more intensity, more pressure drills, more stuff that you need to do where it's one ball rather than 10 balls. Does that make sense then? <coughs> ball counts. It's one putt, 16 stations around the hole for putting. It's one ball chipping, playing different games and competing because every shot then counts. So mentally, you are working right on the knife edge, which is what's going to happen when you play for long golf. All right? So you understand that competition phase, it is really, really, sorry, the pre-competition phase, it is very important. Okay? And then you've got the competition. Now, what do you be doing during the week? You guys, some of you know what you have to do. The ones who are going in there, most of them are, are trying to, most golfers, if you look at a, a field of say a hundred in the field, there'll probably be 10 who are playing reasonably well, really good, they're confident, and the other nine are trying to find something that week. Okay. So the danger in that is that you, you're trying to find something on the range or you, you, you're hoping something will suddenly you know, uh, appear that make you play a bit better. It does happen sometimes. But generally, it's not going to. So you need to know during that competition week how can you conserve your energy, mental and physical? How are you going to be looking after yourself with regards to nutrition, rest, um, being able to, to get your mind quiet rather than you know, worrying about what's going to happen tomorrow? Because I had a, a really good you know, average run the first day or in your practice room. You need to make sure that you know you find the right pre-round routines, uh, making sure that you are in the mode that's going to allow you to play the best golf where you're playing fresh. Okay? Because over a week, you find that even though you might sleep well and eat well, you might start with 100% energy and everything else at this start. Yeah? But every day, as you lose, if you're not looking after yourself with nutrition and hydration. You lose, your body gets gets weaker through the rim, and even if you do do all the right things the next day, you never get back to 100. You might get back to 95%. So by the time you get to Friday in a tournament, you could be working on maybe 85%. You're not fully charged like a battery. So you need to make sure that your your uh, recovery after each round is, is really important to understand what you need to do to recover and keep those energy levels up throughout the week. Most people don't understand that because they don't drink enough, they don't hydrate, they don't look after themselves with the right food, and, and then what happens is, you know, they might be in actually a position to, to be doing very well after two rounds, come to the weekend, those diet, performance drops, <laughs> okay? So that's really important for you too. So playing multiple round tournaments, um, you've got to gauge, if it's a course that you, Play a lot and you know, you probably need to just walk the course once on a Monday, um, possibly a practice round on a Tuesday, 
Wednesday just a light preparation and away you go. But you need to find that out. We need to help you with that. Okay? Because we are, we have the answers, but each person is going to be quite different. But talk and preparation, you've got to understand which phase you're in here, you know, in your in your in your whole series. So what happens is after a tournament, like let's say after the WA Amateur, uh, is there, you know, if there's a break for, let's say there's no tournaments, no major tournaments, I have club competitions yeah. or a summer cup or, um, you know, it could be the Fremantle Open, but they might not be a major for you. Yeah. You then can use the next month to say, well, after that tournament, this is, these are the things I need to work on. You can go into general preparation for a week and then head back up into those other phases as well. So does everybody understand those five phases there? It is crucial. It is crucial because I can tell you right now, 98% of the field won't understand that. They're trying to find the magic cure. They're trying to keep their game up. Now, if you're playing, if you are playing, sometimes it won't happen now, but it will in the future when you turn pro. Is you're going to be playing multiple weeks in a row. That means there's travel now. Time zone change, all sorts of different things. You know, um, you're going to find it hard to sleep if you suddenly go through uh, uh, a different time change. You're playing in the Middle East, or you're playing in the U.S., or you're playing in Japan. Um, the time change and the jet lag and the sleeping thing that can really kick kick in quite badly. And, and if you're not used to it, and you don't have strategies in place for that, you are you are in trouble. You so it doesn't matter. Seriously, that's why most of the guys in WA actually do well. When they go up to it, they actually do quite well for one reason. Because we're used to time change. You want to play a golf tournament? you got to go to Sydney, Melbourne, or Brisbane. It's a three-hour change. You may think it's nothing. It's a huge change. So if you're going to play, let's say you're going to play the, you're, you're here, and we decide that you're going to play the um, a big tournament over east, uh, Agnes. I would say to you here is that you need to be getting out the week, the last week before the tournament in your periodization, the pre-competition, um, you need to be getting up at 3.30, 4 o'clock in the morning here because three hour difference, it's 7 o'clock in the morning over there. So that's the sort of pre-competition stuff that you need to understand. Whereas most of you, you're in the same time zone, you play in that, and then suddenly you go to China or something like that, it might be one or two hours difference. And you probably find you say, I don't know what, the body doesn't feel real good at the moment. Because it still should be, you know, either should be up to about or it should be in bed. You know? All right, so your strategies are in place, you need to have them in place so that you understand where you are in the scale of those five phases. Okay. So once you've got these are the tournaments, this is my baseline data, I understand my five phases. What needs to happen here now is to understand the different cycles that you need to work on. We got micro cycles, which are small cycles, and we got the macro cycles, which are the much uh, where it could be a macro cycle could be up to two months. A micro cycle is one week. So if you have a look at just above the, the testing of strength um, and medical stuff right here, right in the middle of the page, you basically got 52 weeks there. That's your, that's your weekly cycle. So you want to build a weekly cycle uh, incorporating, understanding what you need to be doing. So for, now we are in the second week of, uh, almost the second week of February here. Yeah. Um, which cycle are you in here? Yeah. What, what sort of uh, weekly cycle are you in here? Yeah. You're more, would you say most of you are general preparation, preparation for making some adjustments and changes? Yes. Yeah, for, for a lot of you it is. But some of you might not be, because you've been here for a while. We've done a lot of general preparation in that regard, swing-wise. But guess what? If you could be in general preparation physically, I'm just going to the gym, I'm getting a new gym program. So you'd be in general preparation physical. Swing might be all day, you've done all the stuff here. Yeah. So the macro cycles is what we need to now identify where we are, okay, from the, the physical, physical point of view, the mental, the technical, and the tactical. So those are four of the things that you need to know how you can make the cycles, where you're going to be doing. Where are you going to be doing your general preparation for physical? When are you going to be doing your general preparation for your mental uh, uh, 
improvement, your technical and your tactical. Tactical could be quite simply is that, you know, I, I need to make sure all my equipment's up to, to what I need, yeah, to, to be able to play the best goal. So that micro cycle, that is really important here because um, for some of you, you might be using right up to March, you'll be in probably general preparation in quite a few of those areas over there. Okay, so if you have a look here, physical, mental, technical and tactical. I actually have a, a form that's actually got a filled up for someone who's done it so you get a better understanding rather than me just trying to explain it in here. But we need to know where you are in those four areas with these five phases, meaning where are you general preparation, where are you going to be doing specific preparation. Because there might be there might be some stuff there that you will be doing um, say the W amateur where um, you are going to maintain what you're doing physically because you know, you've kind of got the program. This program is going to last till the middle of the year. Yeah. So you're kind of more... Uh, you might take off for them. Exactly right, exactly. So you might have um, um, a more a, uh, a sort of pre-competition ta yeah. uh, taper off for the physical side yeah. right there. You still might be doing stuff leading up to it, but Two weeks out, one week out, you understand you have to taper off some of that stuff there. Yeah. And then during the week, the competition week, physically, what do I need to do to maintain what? Because in, in one week, you can lose everything you've done for the last two yeah. months. It's true. So, so that's the hardest part. When you're on tour, I mean, you don't know, you've got no control of, you don't have the, the gym around the corner, yeah. that all the machines you use. So what can I use? Do I, do I, can I go and make some uh, inquiries, you know, where I'm going to be staying. Is it, you know, might, might be someone's house, a friend's house, or somebody who's going to live over east to save expenses. Um, it could be you're playing the uh, Tringano Classic, you know, and you go over there, you might you might have a hotel, and that's all it is, a hotel. You, you can't go off jogging or do stuff like that. So what can I do in my room to still maintain some sort of cardio, some kind of stretching, all that sort of stuff. So we need to know that you don't have to be general preparation for everything. It could be, it could be a little bit, you know, physically might be <coughs> you and GP, because you need to get it up to speed so that that you get your program on. But for someone like James who has a program, he needs to understand that he needs to taper that off and during the competition we adjust it and have something there that you can still maintain, yeah, or a maintenance program. That's the same with the mental side too, you know. And when you when you played, uh, let's say the Asian Amateur last year, and you shot 67. Did you sleep well that that, that night? Not really. Correct. Um, so so you were excited about yeah. what's going to happen next week. you yeah, next week, the next day. Hey. Yeah. So so what what were your what did you keep your routine or you try to go to bed at the same time? And if you couldn't go, to sleep, give us some. Uh, I tried I tried to be to sleep like early like. Like 10 o'clock, but it's just, it just cannot sleep. It's twisting and turning. Yeah. And turning. So, what time would you normally go to sleep? I am normally going to sleep like 11. Correct. So, you know, this is something you're going to have to learn from that there. You know, it's possibly trying to go to sleep uh, uh, one, one hour earlier uh -huh. actually was not a good idea. Yeah. Because your body is used to, you're know, almost in the same, same time zone. Uh -huh. You're playing in Singapore yeah. and you're, you're, from, you're from Bali, so you're pretty much the same time zone. So you should have stayed in, in your normal uh, you know, sleep time because when you one, your body's not ready, but more importantly, the mind's not ready. That's what keeps you up. <laughs> the body wants to go to sleep, yeah. yeah. You've had a big day. Um, you know, so, so that's something you need to learn and not make that same mistake. It doesn't mean you go to sleep you know, at one o'clock in the morning or like that. But, um, you know, so when you walk up the next day, the, the mind is working all the time because you can't sleep, you're thinking about your first tea shot, you know, uh, I hope I can keep there, and then you, you, you're trying to fall asleep, you're about to fall asleep, and then suddenly the, the invitation arrived to, because you won the Asian Amateur after you had 67, and then you, you got the invitation to go and play the Masters, and then you walk up and go, oh, where am I? Is that a real dream or not? Yeah. Yeah. So, so that's the sort of stuff, the relaxation um, after a round, um, the recovery mentally, physically, is really crucial. So you need to know how you can do that in your, your different phases. So what you need to 
from those formulas there, are they spread out if you're looking at what you're doing there, Sam? Um, so if you have a look at Sam, you've got WA Amateur here in March, and then there's a block of tournaments here when he goes back home in October, yeah? So, so I'm, I'm sure we can fill in you know, some little tournaments here that you're going to assess yourself, but what he's going to do here, this big gap, we need to know that he can, he can do and make adjustments to get ready for that period, isn't there? But he's got almost three tournaments in that one month. So he better be very good with his transition, which is, you know, if there's a little break between each tournament, how he can make sure that he just spend that time. It might be a couple of days off, and then back into more pre-competition mode, okay? So this gives you a pretty good idea that, you know, that you can do a lot of work assess it in March, and then work on really doing some good stuff in this period, April, May, and then, you know, really getting ready for that, that tournament. You should be, you should be absolutely just ready for these weeks here from a physical point of view, from a technical point of view, and, and uh, even if you, even if you, uh, you know, the form is not where you'd like it to be, you'll still be able to go up there and score, because what you're doing is very natural to you, so yeah, you've developed the point of, you can go out there and perform. That's what, that's what this is all about here. This uh, periodization here is to help you make sure that during this period of the year that you can go out there and play golf. You do not want to go out there, as I said, everyone here has tried and we need to understand this. This doing it the right way doesn't guarantee anything that uh, as we know, the cycles that we have go up and down here, yeah, like this. But we just don't want it to be like big waves, yeah? just little ones that are going up this way. So you can drop in form, but still keep your scoring up reasonable, and then keep working towards it. So, guys, for this for this uh, little page here, filling in this part here is is going to be really the key area of understanding your, your, your macro cycle, that is in the whole year, where are you, what do I need to do with those four areas, okay? And there's a lot more than just, when I say, you know, even the, the mental side of things, um, it's not just, oh yeah, I'm going to, you know, be positive and, you know, be able to uh, monitor my state, it's, a lot of that stuff is about being prepared, making sure that everything is there so that you don't, you don't have these sort of, oh, I forgot to do this, or I didn't do that. Because generally we are creatures of habit. You finish a golf tournament, you know, you know pretty clear in your mind what things are happening. But you know, three weeks from now, then you go back, you make the same mistakes. Remember, this is here. This what this is is here. This one form is going to help you also understand how you can keep improving. So we want you that each of these phases here with your baseline data, we want you to project where you'd like to be in a year's time. That means if you're averaging 30 putts right now, you might work on, in one year's time, making sure that in this, in January next year, or in this end, end of the year, that you want your putting average to be 29. Or better, than you could decide. So you're gonna approach it, so right now it's 30, and then you may be gonna go an improvement of possibly 0.1 every, every month. Possibly. You might have a big improvement somewhere in there because, because you've gone through a good phase of preparation and everything else. You might drop off a little bit because you've had to adjust uh, the way you, you putt, technically. So there might be a little drop off, but basically where do I want to be here? You need to go and look at, as I said, if you go and look at any turf, especially the US turf, have a look where their stats are because they'll tell you. You go to the turn, they'll tell you where you need to be with your total pass, with your chipping up and downs, with your pitch, with your, it's all there. Okay, and so you can go to the LPGA and they'll have all those, those stats in there. So you need to say, well, this is, this is where I need to be at a certain point, maybe in six months, one year, you need a project that for, for you, okay? Rinaldi, you're, you're going to the Asian Tour School, all right? So you need to know, um, I believe it's the same same course as next year. I'm not sure, but yeah, I think they've got. I, I believe it. Yeah. That's correct. 
So you, you really need to go there and, and look at, okay, um, first stage, this is what my stroke average needs to be for me to progress to final stage. Okay, so what do you need to do there for, you know, and say, listen, um, what was the, what was the kind of your course, what was the... Uh, one over. One over. So basically, if you, you know, you want to be par or better, that means you, your stroke average has to be 72. Where is it right now? Do you know where your stroke average is? There you go. So how do we how do we bring that average down to below seventy two? Because you don't want to make it just on the number, do you? Mm. And some some courses were a little higher because they're tougher, but generally you find there you go. So you go you now know that you've got to improve one point five at least yes. if you want to if you want to go up there and be competitive on, on the on the uh, at qualified school and beyond. Yeah. All right. So that those are the, the simple things with regards to understanding a, a very simple uh, form that you can monitor. So you've got those, those there, go back, research the exact dates, we'll give you some extra forms at the end of the day here for you to take back and have your form made up. And it can change, it can change, it's not, this is it, I've got to stick with it. Because, you know, there will be certain times that you need to be in general preparation mode, as I said, in certain areas, sometimes with your game, um, in certain time, it, it, it's in a physical sense that you need to do some work, whether it's your flexibility, your strength, your, um, you know, all different things. Is it more cardio? Is it more strength? Is it flexibility? Yeah. So, I'm not going to ask you for more questions, but uh, do you do you see how filling in these areas here where you consider it's your majors. Yeah. The best players in the world ever, you know. And the guys who play right now. If they have this schedule, they know what their schedule is because they are guaranteed they can play any tour they want to or say on the US tour or the Asian tour. There's some guys on the Asian tour right now, especially if it's your first year, um, or it might be you lost your card, you got a, 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 a national um, category uh, invite. You don't know when you're going to play. Okay, so last week, you know, you might not get in, but this week in the Philippines, you might get in on your category. So it's hard to plan your year, but what we're going to do here is you guys should know which tournaments you like to do well in. Put them down, they're your majors, and then work towards your, your annual program to make sure that you peak your game at the appropriate times, leading into the tournaments, and then knowing how to maintain that, and then understanding the forms going down, that what you need to do to then bring it up to the next level and peak at the next important tournament. Sometimes they're in big bunches, sometimes they're spread out, so this is something that you need to do. But there's a lot of tournaments in between, but all you're using them to do is to assess, like Tiger's playing this week at Pebble Beach. It's a, it's a course that's got some good memories on. He won the US Open there by 15 shots. You know? um, but you know, he's not trying to go up there. But you know, the last time he, when he played there, he won by 15 shots. He was, his game was obviously up here. At the moment, it's kind of you know, a little bit like this at the moment. So he's, he's just going to see where he is um, at the moment. And, and then what he's going to do is adjust and do the right thing so that He's just going to get his game going up so that when he comes to Augusta, he's ready in all areas, not just swing wise. Okay. Some of you have done this, this stuff before. Um, you know, the same, I'm sure those numbers there where you're starting is quite different from when the last time you did something like this. Yes. What was your stroke average the last time? Can you remember? Um, 81. Yeah, 76.5. Yeah. So that was, uh, you know, April, May last last year, so there's a considerable change and now we know we need to make that same amount of improvement you know, from 81 to, to, to 76 and you know, to take it from 76.5 to 72 it's a lot harder than what you did before but is it? Not necessarily yeah. you know, to, to move that 81 average to take it under 80 you know, that took a long while you know? So you know, it's, in, it's pretty much almost 
you know, I would suggest that in the last uh, six weeks, there's been, you know, now suddenly it, 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 you've got the, the graph that things went up this way again. Because you've done all your general preparation that you need to, now you need to really have a program that's going to be able to keep you on track and not go back to your old patterns. Yeah. You know? All right. So, all you guys here, pretty simple. Ivan, I will help you with that a little bit more. You need a bit more work there because you really haven't played many tournament golf. You're still new, but that's okay. You are going to be so far in front because you will understand how to make sure that you, you don't go the week before the tournament and suddenly, oh, I've got to change my swing. It's too late. You, whatever you've got is what you've got. Yeah. So even some, you know, what, what you'll find here is that, you know, you might go out there and your, your driver's not so good or you're not striking it so good. You might go in your specific preparation. Well, you know, I'm going to have to really put a lot more time into my short game because I'm going to scramble this one. You know, so your mind accepts that. Okay, I accept I'm going to hit some, some bad shots. I don't have to play perfect because my short game is really sharp at the moment because I've put a lot of time and effort in it. All right. So the annual periodization, as I said, it's just going to help you plan your year and make sure you understand the different cycles you need to be and the phases. The cycles are what are my weekly cycles? That's the micro, the small, small cycles, and the macro cycle, the bigger ones, and how do I monitor both of them then? All right. And really, as I said, if you, if you haven't done it, you need to get your baseline. If you, you've got your tournaments yet, get your baseline uh, data to, to make sure that you've got a starting point. And then do a little projection. So, saying, you know, when you come to the W, would you like that to be, you know, under 76? It might be, why don't it be, you know, 76? It doesn't have to change that much, but you still got to try and project where you want to be. Yeah. All right? doesn't have to be a change. You might say, I'm going to maintain what I'm doing here, and, and but you know, at some point here, I want to see, I want to see that stroke average in September before your three main tournaments. I want to see that, I want to see that 76.5, you know, be under 75 possibly. Yeah. So you know, that's that's been very realistic, and, and then it'll be you know 74 around here somewhere. Yeah. Now, I can guarantee you, not many golfers, even those on tour, do a lot of this. It's kind of, oh yeah, I'm playing the tournament, I'll just go there and see how it is and flow through it. So Ivan, right now with your, with your swing changes, you are in general preparation. That means you are making big changes and adjustment. All right. So, come, if you play at the June Light Open, you, you, might, you might struggle a little bit. Yeah, but tomorrow we'll find out. Where are you? Do you go back to your hallways? Of course you probably will. <laughs> yeah? That's going to be better than it was when you were falling all over the place when you first came back, yeah? You look like you had jelly legs, you know? <laughs> Love it. Okay. okay. So, does uh, anybody here who needs to ask questions uh, and I didn't understand that or I need to, uh, what do I need to do here? Yeah. Please don't hesitate. Need to talk about it. What's, what's a suggestion like like you were saying earlier? If you play well on the first round and yes. you can't go to bed, as in you go to bed, you follow your routine, you get enough sleep, but you can't fall asleep. Sure, you know, that's going to happen. You know, you're, you're in different territory there. So generally, what needs to happen is you're 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 getting so far ahead of yourself, you're thinking more about the result. What am I going to do if I win or walk? You know. So you just need to get into the mode of, okay, what, what do I need to do now to be in a relaxed state? Because generally what happens is there's a lot of activity up there in the head, which is natural. I don't care who you are. So what do you need to do to, to be able to reduce that activity in the mind so that when you go to bed, the mind's a little bit quiet. So that's where some relaxation um, exercises, strategies that you can do to relax a little bit more. And that's something probably uh, you know that, that we can talk about. Laurie, you know, specialised in that. It's, it's really being able to get yourself in that nice, quiet mind, quieting everything down. And when the, when the mind quietens down, then you, you've got a better chance of getting a good night's sleep. All right. Good night's sleep, you know, uh, is uh, a lot of the times. You know, if you you get you know four or five good.
good solid car or sleep, you're, you're pretty much ready. It's when you're tossed and turned and you're up and about. Okay, but that's normal, you know. That is that is normal. You know, if you've never played in that, um, when Sam goes back to Queensland, his expectations and, and more importantly, other what he perceives as other people's expectations. You know, when Ian had uh, you know 67 first round, I mean, that was huge. You know, he. he, he Played well, he did extremely well, but you know, suddenly now his mind's racing, as I said, to almost the, you know, man, if I win this, I'm at the Masters, huh? How could that be? Did you think about that? Oh, of course. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Of course it is. So again, you're, you're racing, suddenly your mind's over, you know, at Augusta in April, you know, practicing hitting balls next to Tiger. Man, you know, I'll be <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. good to imagine that. That's what I want, but. You know, you have to kind of bring it back. Hey, hold on a second. This is the first day. Okay? You know, um, let's let's uh, let's get get ourselves in a, a uh, in, in now to have a good night's sleep. That should be a community goal. You know, and how do I need to do that? You know, you're going to be taking drugs and stuff like that. But just need to be able to monitor yourself, and that's and that's part of the deal. Um, every time you, you do something different like that, you know, what you want to do is learn from it and. How can I do better? Because you don't want to do the same mistake again, man. Right? Go to bed one hour earlier than expected. That's a killer. That's a killer right there. Okay. You had thought you were doing the right thing. Yeah. That's probably the worst thing you could have done. Okay. You know, um, so after the 77, what happened? What, what did you do? 67, 77? Yeah, 77 again. Yeah, but so after the 77, um, what do you do that night? Just normal sleep? No, I go hang around. I go to Orchard Road like until 10. Yeah, and so you relaxed, you went out there. So that's, so that's a relaxation, you yeah. know, a shopaholic, you know. So you went there and you had a different strategy, you know. But it wasn't like you, you went night clubbing or anything like that. You, you went and you just relaxed, probably had something to eat and went out with some friends. So, you know, 77 again. Maybe maybe you walk around too much, you know, to do that, relax, you know. So learn from that. So what happened the third night? What did, what did we do there? Oh, I just stay at the game room, play yeah. games in the yeah. And because they provide Xbox in the oh fantastic. Yeah. There you go. And then you had seventy the last day. Seventy one. Seventy one. There you go. So there you go. So uh, you know maybe maybe that's for you. you know? Who knows? You know, relaxation. Maybe the mind. Once you play the games, you're not thinking about. It. Yeah. About anything else. So, so you guys need to find each person what that is, how you can do your recovery because it is essential. Physical recovery and, and then the, the mix.